the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be to each one of our viewers of this reflection on the fourth Sunday of Lent, Cycleway's Gospel Reading. A special greeting to the parishioners of Holy Trinity Parish, Assumption, Ohio, in whose church I stand at the moment. Uh, greeting seven, particularly for those parishioners who are gathering with friends, family, neighbors, and fellow parishioners on a weekly basis during the season of Lent to have time of fellowship, prayer, and reflection on the gospel passage in anticipation for the Sunday Mass. So to each of you, just a word of congratulations and encouragement uh, and, and perseverance in this Lenten resolution to gather once a week in your small uh, groups sharing faith. You know, as we are here on the fourth Sunday of, um, of Lent, Ash Wednesday's a little further away and Easter Sunday's a little closer. So persevere, persevere. Today we hear from chapter 9 of the Gospel of St. John, and today's story introduces us to a man who encounters Christ, is transformed in Christ, and is sent by Christ. That simple message, to be transformed in Christ and sent by Christ, parallels beautifully last Sunday's Gospel reading as well. That too came from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4, where Jesus encountered the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Today, Jesus encounters a man blind from, from birth. Uh, this limitation, this illness the man uh, has, has overcome with certainly is a source of conversation. As Jesus uh, approaches him, the disciples, his followers, ask him, uh, Lord, um, Rabbi, who sinned? Here this man has a serious limitation of blindness. Was it he who sinned or was it his father or his mother who sinned? Limitations. Every single one of us experiences it in some regard. Serious physical limitations, illness, chronic suffering. Limitations even within our psychological health. Limitations because of sin we've put upon ourselves or because of the sins of others. Limitations are reality for all of us. And here, this man experiences the limitation, the disease of blindness. And Jesus has answered to the question, what is the cause of that? He doesn't necessarily give the cause, but he gives an opportunity to reflect on what God can do with limitations. He says this, neither he nor his parents sinned, it is so that the works of God may be made visible through him. Jesus Christ has chosen this man who suffers tremendously and has a limitation that's paralyzing in so many regards, has chosen that limitation to be a way to show to the world the works of God made visible in him. See, our limitations are really opportunities for the Lord to do something great in our lives, as it was for this man. What about how we see our own limitations? How about how we see the limitations of our neighbor? Do we see them as an opportunity for God to do something great and extraordinary in our life or in the life of the other? That's what happened here. God did something extraordinary in his life. He was transformed in Christ through that limitation in which he faced, endured, or suffered. As we move up through the passage, a few other insights I think are made known to us here. Um, Jesus um, actually would kind of Go about healing in a rather um, kind of tangible, very uh, um, tangible way. I get best word to put it at this point. He spits on the ground and makes mud or clay, and he smears that clay on the eyes of the man. It's spittle, his spit, and the dirt of the earth becomes a source of healing and remedy. The rabbis of the day 
indicated that the Messiah would be made known because even his spit, his spittle, would be a source of healing. And so Jesus does this and, and puts it upon his eyes. And then he says to the man, go to the pool of Siloam, which means sent, and wash there. He goes there, he washes, and indeed his eyes are opened. A miracle is transformed. He was sent then. And he did exactly as he did. He went, and it was obvious to his neighbors and his family that God had done something extraordinary, that something extraordinary happened in his life at least. He now can see. And the reception of this miracle is rather interesting. It creates a source of controversy. People begin questioning him and even questioning his parents about how all this came about. But the man remains resolute in knowing that he encountered Someone who has power over limitations and can transform them. And he was sent to be sure that he could share that. His life was transformed in Christ, and he was sent to others so they too may know the same. Our lives, through the waters of baptism, through the sacraments of the church, the Holy Eucharist, confirmation, sacrament of matrimony, through our life in prayer, through the life of fellowship, our lives are transformed in Christ so that we might be sent to others. The gospel passage, though, gives us fair warning that when we're sent to others, there can be a source of controversy in our witness to the goodness of Christ in our lives. But nevertheless, we are sent. I ask you, where is God sending you? To whom is God sending you? In preparation to fulfill that commission, the gospel passages gives us the the, the question of the man. When he encounters the Messiah at the end of the gospel passage, Jesus says to him, do you want to know the Messiah? And he says, who is he that I may believe in him? And in that conversation, he says, indeed, he has come to believe in Jesus, the Messiah. In our task to be sent, we must be prepared to explain how we have come to know him. How have we come to know him? Reflect on that. Develop that prepared answer. You've come to know him through what? Through the sacraments of the church, through the Holy Eucharist, through the Bible study, through a moment of prayer. You have come to know him. He has revealed himself to you. Know that in him. And how would you describe him to others? Who is he to you? A savior? A rescuer, a messiah, a hope, a light in darkness. We are like the blind man. You know, we have now sight and we see Christ. We've been, we've been ourselves transformed in him and we are sent to him. Through the celebration of the Holy Eucharist this coming weekend, let's renew that experience of being transformed in him and being sent to others to share that same good news. Grace, blessings, and peace in your continual Lenten journey.